Democrats have refused to listen to the border agents, and they say this is a manufactured crisis. That's their new soundbite. All over, I turned the television. You know, I call it the opposition party. It's called the fake news media. And what happens is every, every network has a manufactured crisis. This is a man, every one of them. It's like they, you know, send out to everybody, let's use this soundbite today. So it's a manufactured, but it's not. All right, that was President Trump today at a roundtable on immigration and border security in McAllen, Texas. Earlier today, at the border, I talked to the Texas senators, Ted Cruz and John Cornyn, about this border crisis. Take a look. Senator, you came uh, here. This, right over my shoulder. Yeah. It's like a two-minute walk. Literally, you can walk across the Rio Grande. Yeah. And we saw the drugs when I was interviewing the president. Yeah. Um, this is happening every day here. Right. Look, this is over 500 pounds of drugs that was, was intercepted right here. I think this trip was very valuable. The I was pleased to come down with the president to meet with Border Patrol, but also to meet with, with victims uh, whose, whose family had lost their lives to illegal immigration. There right. are real human tragedies. And when you see Chuck Schumer and the Democrats force a government shutdown mm -hmm. because they are so adamantly opposed to securing the border, that's really out of touch, mm -hmm. and, and it's not where the American people are. You know, I, I sat in a briefing here in this very sector, and come on over, Senator. We will, we'll say hi to you as well. Senator Cornyn is uh, hey, welcome. Sean. How are you, my friend? I'm good. good you know, I, I was just telling Senator Cruz, last time I was down here, I've been to the border 14 times from the Rio Grande to San Diego, but I sat in a security briefing with Governor Perry at the time, and in a seven-year period in this state, 642,000 crimes committed against Texans. Some petty crimes, but it included murders right. and rapes. Right. Um, this is a huge problem. This is life and death. Um, how long should the president be holding out? I know some in the Senate are getting a little nervous about reopening the government, fur furloughed employees. Well, I think the president's uh, advice to us is to stay strong, and we will. We're not going to fold. Mm -hmm. uh, this, we're on the right side of this argument. As uh, Ted and I both know, we've talked to families affected by crime. We've talked, to, of course, to the law enforcement, border patrol, to the very, to the migrants themselves who get, uh, you know, raped, robbed, and murdered in the hands of some of the criminal cartels. I don't think people fully comprehend it. So I'm glad the president's down here to. Uh, bring the point home. This is not just about economic migrants. It's about illegal drugs. It's about uh, human trafficking. Uh, it's about crime. And uh, so it's really important that he's here. You know, to the idea that somehow people are making the argument that this is manufactured, we just lost Officer Singh. We lost a young kid in Knoxville, Tennessee named yeah. Pierce Corcoran. I interviewed his parents. Um, their lives will never be the same again. They lost, they lost a 22-year-old kid. This... Uh, there seems to be a callousness or a disconnect. We're losing 300 Americans a week because of the heroin and the opioid epidemic, 90% coming through this border. Well, look, Officer Singh's brother joined us for the round table, and he was grieving at his brother. And it's worth noting, both he and his brother, they are themselves immigrants, but they came the right way. They came legally, seeking the American dream, and his brother wanted to be a cop, wanted to keep people safe, and he lost his life to a criminal illegal alien. And you know, the Democrats, they masquerade, they try to cloak their support for open borders by saying it's compassionate. Sean, it is not compassionate to want even a single little boy or single little girl in the custody of human traffickers. Nobody, look, you, you and I both have kids. No one wants to see a teenage girls in the custody of human traffickers that do unspeakable things. You know what the compassionate thing to do is? Secure this border and stop illegal immigration and stop the drug trafficking. Well, Democrats did politicize it when they talked about family separation. The separations you're discussing are permanent separations yeah, that's right. yeah. that, that can never be fixed. So the Democrats, they don't seem to want to negotiate at all. What's the next step? And should the president just hold strong and wait till they come to the table? Well, unfortunately, in addition to everything you've discussed, we have about 800,000 federal employees that are wondering how do they pay their mortgage? How are they going to put food on the table? Completely unnecessary collateral damage. Uh, this, is a, this is a dispute that could be resolved in the next 30 minutes. If Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer actually wanted to negotiate in good faith. The president. But, but didn't they support it in 06 and 2013? Oh, absolutely. Hillary, they, they sounded like Trump. <laughs> well, Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, Chuck Schumer all supported the Secure Fence Act in 2006. And again, during the uh, uh, Gang of Eight immigration bill, they voted for 
50 million dollars worth of uh, uh, border patrol 2013 border. Yeah. 2013 and it's, and it's even more than that look the president is asking for a little over five billion dollars in border security and to build a barrier mm -hmm. and the democrats have said chuck schumer and nancy pelosi have said hell no not one penny that goes to a wall their objection isn't on substance. I mean, Schumer and the rest of them voted for $40 billion just a few years ago. Their objection is pure politics. They hate the president. Their left-wing base hates the president. And, and Chuck Schumer, this is now the second Schumer shutdown in a year. He forced one earlier because he wanted to see amnesty. He forced the second one because he wants to see open borders. And, you know, I know you watched the president's address earlier this week and then... <laughs> Schumer and Pelosi's the, the Saturday Night Live skit that followed. If Saturday about? Night Live yeah. were remotely fair, that would be their <laughs> opening. But they won't make fun of Democrats, so I promise you they won't do it. They they have to. They, I, it would be impossible <laughs> to be that biased. Look, I got to say though, that thing when I saw Schumer and Pelosi, that thing looks like a hostage video. No, I see yeah. hostage videos can be more compelling. And and, <laughs> yeah. by, and I am just about certain if you watch it again in slow motion, yeah. Nancy is blinking SOS as Schumer is talking. I mean it. <laughs> <laughs> they know they're in the wrong, and the American people know they're in you the wrong. You think this will turn around? Are you expecting a breakthrough? We haven't look. Yesterday, if they say no to the wall, nothing. I know the president pretty well. I think he's going to stand firm as long as the Senate does. Mitch McConnell's standing strong. Lindsey Graham's standing strong. You're standing we'll, with the president. We'll stand strong. I think uh, once uh, once Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer's caucus starts to hear from their constituents who are having trouble paying their bills and putting food on the table, I think they'll they'll crater. Well, well, thank and, you. And yeah. I'll say, look, to furloughed federal employees, they're going to receive their back pay. The president said he supports that. Absolutely. Yeah. They're going to receive their back pay. Now, they should be paid today. Schumer needs yeah. to end this shutdown. But, you know, yesterday the president came to the Senate, had lunch with all the Senate Republicans, and it was striking. There was a unity. We were standing together. We were unified. And I'm grateful the president has helped really infuse some spinal fortitude. And, and I think the Democrats are starting to panic because the position they're taking, it's not reasonable and, and it's not right. We can't have any more Americans being killed by people that yes. didn't respect our laws and sovereignty. And this opioid epidemic, yeah. those drugs that have flown into this country, they're going to every small yep. town and big yeah. city across this country, and 90% of it is from right over there. Yep. That's right. So heroin. it's got to stop. Yeah, the, the heroin, heroin the fentanyl. with fentanyl. Right. Wow. That's scary. And, uh, yeah. The heroin and fentanyl, you're right. More than 70,000 people died of drug overdoses. A lot of that was opioids coming from across the border. Right. And as you said, Sean, 90% of the heroin coming from Mexico. So yeah. this is uh, this is a humanitarian crisis, and it is a national security crisis. It's life and death. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Thank you both. Appreciate Thanks, the time. Thank good you, sir. Thank Senator, you. Good to see you again.